You... you are the Hallowed. You have come in our hour of need. Please, Moon Hallowed. We've been driven from the temple, and the Claw is in terrible danger. The Stonefire cult happened. They and the Dramathra beasts slaughtered our holy order. All at the behest of that Javad Darn. Joan and Jode preserve us. I think they mean to take the Golden Claw, the holy symbol of our order. You must get the Claw. Take it somewhere safe. You'll need the blessings of our High Priest to see you safely through. I think the Stonefire have taken them prisoner. Seek them out in the shrines east and west of the main temple. The Holy Waters of Dokren have kept the Claw safe for years. I pray they keep you safe as well. Dokren Monastery. The warriors grin in the Tamarelic tongue. A holy site to those of us in the lunar clergy. A stopover for pilgrims and a training ground for those who practice the martial vows. You are obviously the capable sort. And if you're willing to help us, I would be a fool to deny the mercy of Joan and Jod. The alternative is Javad Darn with his hands on the claw. That must not come to pass. An artifact sacred to my order. A holy relic from the era of the main Tuladra. Today, it signifies the martial vows we take when we join the order. The pious nature of our contemplation. A symbol of the bright moons. We are the Order of the Claw, the Keepers of Dokren. This one has protected the Sacred Claw all her life. Prayed to the Bright Moons for guidance in the safety of the Khajiiti people. Within the Lunar Clergy, there are many Orders. The Order of the Crescent, the Brotherhood of the Fang. We keep the Claw safe here, and train in our martial vows. If these brutes weren't aided by dark spirits, they would never have taken the sight. than reading. Please, speak with me. I have no one else to turn to. Kindly traveler, thank you. I thought I'd never see another friendly face again. I came to make an offering to the Bright Moons. My brother Indal is off at the front in Cyrodiil, and I was to pray for his protection. That was when the screaming started. Yes. They were everywhere, the dark spirits clawing at my throat. I tried to run, but I didn't. Please, you have my letter, my offering. Finish what I could not. Place the offering pouch at the nearby shrine to the waxing moons, then my letter at the shrine to the bright full moons. Finally, light a candle for Indal at the waning moon shrine on the hill.
Indal, please don't go. I have go. no choice. It is my duty, Teya. Take this token. Pray for Indal. Promise? I promise, Indal. Stay safe. Joan and Job, keep this one's brother safe. Watch over Indal. Keep him safe in the fighting to come. Bring him home. He's all I have left. Dokrin Monastery? Is this a dream? It feels... Teya! No! What's going on? Indal, I'm here! I'm sorry, brother. I am dead. Teya! This can't be true! This must be a dream! This is a dream for you, but I speak the truth. A kindly stranger has fulfilled your sister's prayer. Joan and Jode saw fit to reunite us one final time. This can't be goodbye. Your Taya will always be with you. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Yes! You are no cultist. You have come to save Mahazi. Thank you. How did you know to find us here? How did Joan lead you to this one's side? Ah, so you are here for the claw, in point of fact. Ahem. <clears throat> well, Mahazi will not turn away help. Untie me, if you would. And a blessing. Joan, watch over you. It is done. Protect the claw.
Bright moons, please free me. May Jod bless you with his tears and keep you always at his breast. Why have you come to the aid of Kansur Joe? This one felt sure he would die here. The monastery swarms with the Stonefire cult. But yes, the sacred claw must be kept safe. This one will bestow upon you the cool light of Jod's grace. This one is eternally grateful. May Jod's smile keep you safe. It is done. Good luck. Be calm in the moonlight, Halor. Welcome to the Dokrin Monastery. These stones were old even in Riddha Ridata's day as men. This one sensed the danger here, the threat to the Claw, and the threat to you, Halor. The men, the Claw, the Halor, the moons, everything has its place on the path. You have already encountered the cult and their dark thralls. The cult, in their ignorance, tear at the temple walls. They want to enter the inner sanctum, overcome the wards, and claim the claw. Fools. The stone fire have torn down several shrines to the bright moons. These shrines are the keys to entering the sanctum, but you, Hallowed, you have the blessings of Joan and Jod upon you. With a touch, you can reconstruct the shrines. Together we shall restore the altars. You wield the blessings of the bright moons, and Rydthar will attune their connection to Joan and Jod. Of course, Joan and Jod teach us that the light of knowledge is just as bright as moonlight. The march is in turmoil. The future of the Line of the Mains is in danger, and threats bubble up from within and without. We may be far from the heart of elsewhere here, but Riddhar goes where his people need him. Over the years, objects become imbued with faith, meaning, and power. The Golden Claw is one such an object. Its meaning to the Order of the Claw is such that many priests gave their lives to try to protect it. The Stonefire cult is led by a thorn. That family is a vine of corruption wrapped around the heart of Tamriel. This one does not know what plans Javad Tharn has for the Claw. Ridthar does not want to know. Excellent. This altar is intact. It needs only to be attuned. Regret the bright moons wane from the sky.
cool light of the moons preserve us. Let the bright moons shine down. Moonlight won't it be. The inner sanctum should be open to we pilgrims now. Joan and Jode smile down upon us. Are you ready to enter the reliquary, the inner sanctum of Dokrin? A final defense bars our way into the reliquary proper. The guardian sench stands watch inside. Normally, you would have to be a high priest of the lunar clergy to seize its protection. With the blessings you carry, you will have no trouble. This one. He senses a darkness moving towards us. The cult must have felt the change within the monastery. We should move quickly. So, I have you to thank for dropping the barriers to the Temple Sanctum. Now, kill! Merely touch the sedge, and unlock the way to the reliquary. John and Joe be praised, the Golden Claw intact. The bright moon smiled down upon us, traveler. The Claw is safe. Just so. In peaceful times, the Claw can sit in the darkness, at rest. This is not a peaceful time for the march. The Claw may yet be a weapon against the Tharn and his brood and the priests will know how to use it. Wherever the lunar winds take you next, know that you have done the Khajiiti people a service today. Keep the claw safe, that it may protect our tomorrows as well. You have saved the Claw from true darkness. It is your sacred charge now. Truly, Ritaridata himself. This one is humbled by his faith in Azar. She will do her best to make him proud. 
The Order of the Claw will protect their most sacred relic. And the march will one day be cleansed of these shadows. We never really got to say thank you, Hallowed. You stood beside us at Ralka. Saw our parents, saw our past. Thank you for your guidance and friendship. It means a great deal to us. But then, enough about the past. Kali has already laughed at my attempts to write down what happened. We have much more dangerous, immediate threats ahead of us. Kali has been chomping at the bit. She has grown tired of these Dromatra and hungers for bigger game. We hunt the Dark Mane, who has taken root deep within Moonmont. His legions have boiled up from below, killed most of the monks. And the beacons that mark the site as holy ground are grown dark. They fuel a ward lock upon the temple door. Take this prayer to the bright moons. We must go to the beacons, the large pillars around the temple. There we pray. We cleanse the beacons and drive away this darkness. Hallowed, I know together we can see this done. What do you say? We'll meet you at the beacons. See you there, Hallowed. out. <laughs> Hallowed, this one is glad you are here. This beacon has an intensity to its corruption. It is teeming with the energies of the Dromatra. Shaza must perform the purification. You are powerful, my friend. 
But Shaza has long experience dealing with the dark energies here. She must be the one to dispel them. Besides, the ritual will no doubt draw attention. You must protect Shaza as she works. They come for the beacon! More of them! Watch yourself! It is done. Thank you, Hallowed. I shall meet you at the temple entrance. Just wanted to be sure you were well protected. Go ahead, Hallowed. Nice work. See you at the temple door. Don't underestimate us. Oh yeah, <laughs> that felt good. With the beacons cleansed, this ward is just an annoyance. Shazai is preparing to crack it wide open. You've already done your part here, Hallowed. Let's just stand back and let her do her thing. Shaza, what happened? <sighs> that thing was stronger than it looked. I'll be fine. Let's get inside.
Hallowed, we are here, within the walls of Moonmont. She's nervous, but also very excited. Look at these rooms, and the scrollwork over the doorways. Oh, if we had more time, I'd take rubbings of some of the more involved inscriptions. Fascinating. Oh yes, Hallowed. I've been reading tomes about Moonmont since I was a cub. And to see this place with my own eyes, it's... Uh, to be honest, it's easier to focus on the ancient knowledge around me than to think about tomorrow. We spoke for the first time last night about... about the main. About all the pressures that one of us will assume. She, of course, says I would be better at the job than she would. Says, my wisdom and intelligence are what our people need. This place reeks of corruption. Hallowed, this temple is unclean. Kali is thrilled to be here, Hallowed. I've trained for this my whole life. Shaza and I were children when the monks first told us of Moonmont, of the Dramatra. Now we are here, making history with you. Shaza and I spoke of it last night. We know that soon we will have to talk of the main. Who will be donning the headdress? Who will lead our people in the rituals? She thinks I should lead. Says my bravery would be an example. Ha! Yes! In the ancient times it was huge! Made of the braids of every Khajiit to worship the bright moons. The mane had to be carted around on a palanquin to make appearances. The modern headdress is much more... manageable. Try to keep up, Hallowed. Another barrier. Shaza can crack it. Dark wounds. This one is even stronger than the one outside. Moon month should be the heart of lunar light in Reaper's March. Instead, we are surrounded by darkness. Tharn and the Dark Main dare to tread on Temple ground. Blasphemies against the Two Moons dance, and corruption crawls the walls in Moonmon's inner chamber. The Dark Main's residue has twisted the altars to Masra and Secunda. It crawls from between the bricks, stretching and clinging to any ray of light. The darkness of the Dromathra reaches from where they dwell beyond, snuffing out all it touches. Ah, yes. Each of the three altars is normally aligned to one of the lunar phases. Simply refocus their light, throw back the darkness, and reclaim... <clears throat> that should allow you to pass through the door. In times of old, the carvings and adornments upon the walls would sing of the dance. Precious stones inlaid upon intricate plaques would speak to Masur and Secunda. Time has not been kind to these adornments, but still, they may speak to you. I'm glad you and Shaza are around. Altars, lunar phases... It's a little beyond me. Just shout if something jumps out at you.
The altars are aligned, the darkness thrown back. Destroy the barrier, Shazar! Let's see this done. Right behind you, sister. Where is he? I don't know. He should be in here. You're mine now, champions! Kali! Watch out! What? Shaza and I are ready. We are prepared, focused, horned. Are you? Hallowed, I can see the light of the dance reflected in your eyes. Joan and Jod smile down upon you now. They are with you at this difficult hour. You must choose. With you are two modes in the darkness. Kali and Shaza are the lunar champions, truly. One will go on to shine as brightly as Joan and Jod. The other will twist and rot and wither here in the corruption below Moonmont. You are the Moon Hallowed. It is your destiny to make this choice. One will live with you and walk the two moons path. They will become the next main. The other will hold the dark main in place here and dwell forever in darkness. Ridthar will tell you what he can, but know that this choice is yours. You must choose with your heart, and your mind, and your soul. You say it truly. She will remain here a prisoner in darkness. Only through the strength of her heart, the wisdom of her mind, can the evil that is the Dark Main be contained. You have seen for yourself, Moon Hallowed. The devastation at Fort Grimwatch. That is what is possible for a Dark Main fully in control of their host. When the host and the darkness are one, the darkness is terrifying. The Dark Main is a creature of darkness, a being from beyond the stars. The only way he could be truly destroyed is to face him in one of those places beyond. But here, now, one of the champions can hold him. Make the world safe from his evil. No, Hallowed. This must be your decision. Speak to the champions if you need to. Hear what they have to say before you decide. This must be your decision. Alone. Hallowed, Kali is not prepared for what's required here. Choose me to contain the Dark Main. Absolutely. Kali would make a far better main. Her strength and resolve would serve her well. Shaza is well acquainted with the darkness of the Dromatra. She knows what must be done. I can do this. This is my responsibility. Take Kali and leave this place. Hallowed, she should be the next main. I am just a scribe who was born on a particular day at a particular time. I do not deserve to be main. Hallowed, Shaza cannot contain this darkness. She does not have the strength. Choose me to take on this burden. Ask me any questions you need to. Let's get this whole thing over with. I would lead with a firm hand and a brave heart. 
just as Mother taught me all those years ago. Father was ever speaking about the brilliance of Shaza's spell casting. Once she cast a spell and the whole sky lit ablaze. They were so proud of her. I'm sure they'd want her to be main, to lead our people. Yes, Halod. Shazai is brilliant and talented, but I do not think she can physically take the strain of holding this darkness within her. I have the strength and the will to take on this burden. Yes, Shazai is much better suited to lead our people. She has studied so long and so hard. She knows much of the bright moons and is much better at dealing with people. She should lead, and I should stay. Hallowed, Kali is not prepared for what's required here. Choose me to contain the Dark Main. Of course, Hallowed. I will answer any questions I can to make your decision easier. I would... I would try to lead with wisdom, as the monks taught us, as I learned from my father. Mother was always so proud of Kali's blade work. She used to have her demonstrate for the other children. I'm sure they would want Kali to be the next main. She is far stronger, braver than I am. She's a better leader and a proud warrior. Absolutely. Kali would make a far better main. Her strength and resolve would serve her well. Shaza is well acquainted with the darkness of the Dromatra. She knows what must be done. I can do this. This is my responsibility. Take Kali and leave this place. Hallowed, she should be the next main. I am just a scribe who was born on a particular day at a particular time. I do not deserve to be main. Sister, please. Reconsider. This is the way it must be. Sister, do not weep for me. This creature is now contained. Leave this place, sister. Java Darn will pay for what is done to my sister. I swear it. Mons be damned. I will get my sister back. I don't care what the moldering old ghost says. I'll walk the path with you. Cut Tharn's throat and come back with an army of mages to free Shaza from this torment. Shazza. Damn it. Why did she force me into this? <sighs> I suppose there is nothing else for it. We have to make for Dune. Walk the two of Moon's path, of course. It's been my destiny since I was a cub. I know that now. We walk the path, I become main. Then, we get my sister back. A moment of your time, kind walker. Hey, hello there, friend. Can I beg your assistance today? As you can see, Jurak is a member of the Lunar clergy. Many of my friends, my brothers, died when these beasts appeared. I would have fled myself, but for the ring of Rid Taridata. To the Brotherhood, the ring is valuable for spiritual reasons. 
But I fear some may see other kinds of value in our sacred relic. Please, Jurak is no warrior. Will you retrieve the ring from the Moonmont Vault? You are very brave. May the moons brightly shine down on your soul as your soul shines out in the night. No, no. Uh, Jurak just has one of those faces, you know. The bright moons orbit in mysterious ways. Shovel, this is my spot. Who are you? Why are you dressed as a brother? I'm running a game here, lady. Get gone before my partner comes back with my ring. Your ring? Are you stealing Riddhar's ring? Thief! Thief! Oh, hush! And look, my partner's come back. Let's talk, partner. There's a lot of coin in it for you. Hello again, partner. Don't worry about what this little priest said. Hand over the goods. You found me out, my friend. Jurak is no priest. He was your guide and companion in the ruins of Bellerata, but truly, he had a very good reason for everything he did. Because the ring is very valuable, of course. Jurak Dar has a very lucrative buyer lined up in the town of Baalat. Very respectable, and willing to pay tough coin. You have retrieved the ring, so Jurak will cut you in. Do not listen to him. He is a thief! The ring of Riddhar is a sacred relic of my order. It cannot be taken from the temple grounds and sold in some market. Yes! A piece of living history, touched by the fur of the first man himself. To even think that it could be bought or sold. Please, Traveler. You must give the ring to me. We'll keep it safe, hidden, and preserved for our people. For your respect of Kajiti history, your love of the past, receive this blessing. May the bright moons guard your steps until the end of your days. You see, thief? There are still good and true people in this world. You're both idiots. At least I can sell this robe for a coin or two. Drinks for Jurak tonight! I'm gonna show off a little.
May the green keep you, Traveller. Welcome to our sleepy little town of Willow Grove, Traveller. We make the finest golden honey mead, rare and delicate on the tongue. Well, we do when things aren't all a flutter. We've got a number of beehives, right? We've been looking to clear some of the forest, expand out, and hired a mage to help make it happen. The buzz around town is that there's a problem. I don't know the details, though. I'd say you should go talk to Treefane Raneth. She runs our little town here. She has the biggest house in town, the one with two bulbs. Can't miss it. Have a good day, traveller. Ah, welcome. I'm entertaining a guest at the moment. Is there something I can help with? Ah, people spreading rumors. You heard true enough. We hired an Aldma mage to clear the land above the village to make room for our beehives. He's been dazed now, and if he doesn't complete the contract soon... Well, if he doesn't complete the contract soon, he'll have to eat his wife. Alanya seems like a lovely girl. And I don't want that to happen. We are simple people here, and we know little of magic. As part of the contract, Alanya offered herself as our pact hostage. I want to give Master Prokoma more time to work his magic, but he has little time left. The Mage's tent has some papers and personal items inside. Perhaps you could look to see if anything there might explain this delay? And... Huh. Perhaps Selanya may be able to suggest what to look for. I pray to the Green. You can help us resolve this. No one here wants to see this contract fail. It's somewhat complicated. This situation is all about a contract that ensures equal treatment between unequal partners. Pacomo is a mage, powerful and learned. We're just simple brewers. Tradition states that the Pact Hostage is a guarantee that the more powerful party will fulfill their end of the bargain. If Pacamo doesn't fulfill the contract, we'll be forced to prepare his wife and serve it to him as Unthrapa. In Tonrielic, it translates something like atonement. We say that if you are forced to eat the Unthrap, you must eat your sin. You must consume your failure. Aye, I could. We hired Pekamo to clear the trees above the village. We're a devout community. We observe the Green Pact as closely as possible. Cutting down the trees for our own gain would be a clear violation of our belief. Yes, of course. Before Pekamo came to town, we were going to hire some Khajiit from Olkar to do the work. But when he and Alanya arrived, he asked if there was any service he could provide, so... We took him up on his offer. The philosophy, the religious point of view for most of my people. We hold the forest sacred, and the pack forbids us from harming plants and trees. It can be somewhat inconvenient to stay true to our faith, but we manage. Yes, it is verboten for us to harm the forest by direct action. But for a non-believer, an outsider, to clear the trees, especially for the benefit of the faithful, that is fine. This really is the most delightful brew. Being a packed hostage is turning out to be very pleasant, really. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Not at all. Roneth has been a dear to me, and Procolmo told me all about this hostage thing. He says it's just a formality, that I don't have anything to worry about. So I'm not. Oh, silly Procolmo. Yes, yes, he's taking his time. Don't worry, he's getting it just right. I bet he's just forgotten some ritual components. 
Oh, the ritual itself, he did that once. Silly Pergolmo. I bet he'd appreciate any help you'd be willing to give. Pergolmo is a kind, gentle soul. Didn't help him at all in the guild, but it makes me love him all the more. Wait! Why are you in my tent? Who are you? Oh, hello. You're not from Willow Grove. You're looking through my things. Can I help you? Thank the eight. I really could use some help. Something's gone terribly wrong and I don't know what I did. I should never have told them I was a powerful mage. My poor Alanya. I don't want to eat her. A ritual? Oh, the ritual Master Tellinger sent for me. You're right. This should absolutely work. We'll just need to gather the right ingredients. Uh, will you gather them? I should really attend to things on the hill. The chitin of a Horvor, five torch bug thoraxes, and a heartwood fragment. I don't know. Maybe Raneth will know where you can find these things. I have to get back up the hill. Just find me when you have them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hoped there was something helpful in the tent. I'm starting to worry about how the other villagers will react to these continued delays. Ah, good then. What are you looking for? Perhaps I can help. Hmm, Cerulean should have some. He's a merchant. Travels all about Valenwood, but always returns home to us here in Willow Grove. He usually has some chitin from his travels to the Southern Wood. Oh, heartwood? Any of our grown homes should have some. When the green speakers shape trees into houses, it often leaves behind wilted and useless heartwood. We keep them as decoration, but no one would mind getting rid of it.
What can I get for you? I have goods from the march and into Valen Wood. I've got some spare chitin in stock, and I'd be happy to sell it to you. But, uh, you're not from round here, right? I could use a favour. This is all so stupid. A few months back, I was travelling near Cyrodiil and ran across a group of refugees. I started talking with a little girl who lost her family, ended up adopting her and brought her home, along with a good haul of coin. The village loudmouth, a lady named Marlis, immediately started churning the rumour mill. She dropped the nickname Sells All onto me. I'd like this kind of talk to stop. For the sake of my daughter, could you persuade her to... just to stop? Ariel, watch over you. Maybe just tell Malas my Tassia is adopted. And I don't want her to feel unwelcome here. I don't know. I don't understand that woman. Welcome, welcome. We have lots of interesting people here, like the merchant Cerulean. He's certainly got a story or two. Why should I? Did that hussy put you up to this? I'm only saying the obvious. He comes back home suddenly with a bunch of coin and a new daughter. He's clearly been having some fun on the side. He's got a night blossom in the city. Mark my words. She's adopted? You mean he's... Wow. That's really quite sweet of him. Oh, I hope I haven't blown my chance with him. Wait, you didn't hear that. I'll, I'll stop with the rumours. Have you spoken to Marlis? She's got quite the way of showing it. I mean, well, it wasn't so terrible. Tension was nice. Anyway, Kitan. You need a Kitan? Here. Thank you for speaking with her. Very kind of you to stick your neck out for a stranger. My friend from the tent, how good to see you. Did you find the ritual components? I don't know what you mean. Nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. Ah, you noticed them. Well, that's true. I intended to summon up just a simple magical force to clear the trees. My people, we don't make packs with Daedra, you know. But something went wrong. Very, very wrong. Cast the ritual. I've got everything ready here. Double check just to be sure. Just needed those components you gathered and... Yes, ready to go. I'll just get started. Okay, okay. I can do this. Just like forgetting my notes. Here we go. Wow. Master Tellinger's spell is easier than I thought. I think I... Something's wrong. What's going wrong? I did it right. It's... I need... Help! It's just barely holding together. Since the spell I cast didn't, wasn't intended to bring in the Atronox, I'm having trouble sending them back. I need to link the spell with the Atronox, cause, destroy the creatures, and get me a core of each element type. And uh, hurry!
What's going on here? You summoned Daedra into our forest. We're working on it. Please, I'm trying to. You're a monster. Our contract is broken. The Green has spoken. No! Wait! She seemed very upset. Very upset. Alanya, no! Ranith will cook her up now that she's seen what's happening here. I have to go. I... I'm such a failure. Please, you have to help me set this right. I normally fail at everything. You have to understand, this spell worked too well. I wanted a simple, magical construct, and it summoned dozens of Atronachs. Something has to be corrupting my ritual, twisting it. Take this wand. I borrowed it from Master Tellinger before I left the guild. You can use it to pinpoint the source of the corruption. I have to go after Ranith. I have to save my wife. Hey there, mortal. How you doing? Ha! You mortals. You always make me laugh. <laughs> yep, I'm a talking dog. Name's Barbus. I'm a companion to the Daedric Prince of Wishes. Guy by the name of Clavicus Vile. Hold on, hold on. We'll get to that in a moment. I bet you're here about all those Atronachs, right? That stupid mage let his magic get away from him. Well, this altar here next to me is the cause of all his problems. He had this silent plea to have something work well just once in his life. The altar twisted that up. And, to be honest, it keeps me bound here. <laughs> Look. Do you want to fix things for that guy or not? His wife will get eaten if you sit around talking to dogs all day. If you want to set things right, you'll have to smash the altar. <sighs> we'll both be happier with that altar smashed. You'll see. Sure, mortal. What can old Barbus tell you? He's a pain in my furry butt, that's what he is. He's the Daedric Prince of Deals. Make a wish, seal a pact, and he'll be there to grant you all the power you want. For a price, obviously. That's kind of a rude question, isn't it? I'm a dog. Look at my snuggly fur and cute wiggling tail. I'm adorable. Vile and I have a complicated relationship. How can I explain it to you? Um, oh, I'm a dog, right? He put me in the doghouse. Won't let me home unless somebody else lets me out. I don't really know. I guess there was some kind of cult here in the march a long time ago. Or oh, maybe it represents the site of some kind of important pact. 
Even Vile's forgotten about this old place now. Good luck with... whatever it was, mortal. Well? You've returned. Don't try to interfere. But Kalmor brought this on himself. Atronox. In our wood. What are you talking about? I saw the Atronox. A sacred wood, ravaged by Daedric beasts. I gave him a chance and he spit in my face. I wish it were otherwise, but the Green Pact is clear. He must eat his sin. You have acted with honor so far, and I have no reason to think you a liar. What about the Atronox, though? We aren't prepared to face beasts like that. And he can send those things away. I see. It's clear to me now that Willowgrove needs someone wise to the ways of spellcasting. Hmm. In the meantime... I owe some apologies. I will set about freeing Alanya. She did not deserve our rough treatment. He's... locked within my home. He was being held until... <clears throat> until mealtime. Go and fetch him. I will untie Alanya and... meet you there. Do you mind? My friend! They hit me over the head and dragged me in here. Is Alanya safe? Truly? Thank the eight, my friend. Without you, I would never have found out what was going on. Thank you. Alanya and I are deeply in your debt. Where is she? What are we waiting for, then? Let's go! Master Pocolmo, Lady Alanya, please, accept my apology. Um, don't worry, I, I thought it was my fault too. What he means to say is, these sorts of misunderstandings happen. We're not the type to hold a grudge. Right, yes, that, that's what I meant. I'd like to extend you a more permanent offer here. We could use someone with your diligence and knowledge. I don't really follow. I don't want to put Alanya... Dear, she's offering you a job. You'd be the town mage. Really? I mean, yes, absolutely. Uh, if it's all right with you, dear. I think I'd quite like that. No more stone tables, though, Ronith. It would be our honor to have you both here. We came far too close to a tragedy here. If we'd wrongly slain Alanya. Thanks to you. A touch of a Daedric Prince is enough to muddy any water. I look forward to working with Master Pacamo. We could really use someone of his expertise. 
May the green guide your steps. After we talked through our little misunderstanding, Rollis and I agreed that Percolmo would make a good town mage. I quite like it here. The mead. So delicious. Did you hear? Raneth wants to make me their town mage. Elania loves it here. I think it's the mead. I can be a working spellcaster instead of a failed student. I can do this, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you. <laughs>